Daystar Television, which is the second biggest Christian television network in America, uh, Marcus and Joni Lamb in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, they built a brand new television studio in Jerusalem and invested a lot of money in it. Uh, I, I'm, I don't know what the amount would be. I would say several million dollars, uh, knowing the, the size of Daystar. I know what we had to spend here. A so, beautiful location overlooking the uh, Mount Zion, the Mount yes. of Olives. I mean, great location. Oh, one of the best places you could be in, in Jerusalem. Uh, but anyhow, an arsonist tossed a firebomb into Daystar studio and burned down the entire complex. They had just finished building it. And so it's not going to go on the air. The, the entire thing has been burned to the ground. And it started uh, uh, Saturday morning. Now, this was in Jerusalem. Okay. I, I don't know. Are there any? See, I, I'm waiting for the Christian Zionists to put the blame on Palestinians mm -hmm. and say those Palestinians burned down Daystar. We don't know who burned it down. We don't know. That's right. They haven't arrested We, we don't yet. know. We don't know if it's if it was Muslims or uh, radical Zionist Jews. But we do know that there have been churches in Israel that have been attacked by people. By radical Zionist Jews. Yes. A number of Christian churches have been burned, have been desecrated, ha have been uh, vandalized by radical Jews. Now, it's possible that this was done by Arabs. We don't know. But Daystar just suffered a multi-million dollar loss and um, they will not be broadcasting from Israel for quite some time. Now, there also have been attacks on churches in the West Bank in recent days. On May 16, the Church of God in the village of uh, Abud, west of R Ramallah, uh, was attacked. On, and, that, and what's interesting is that that little town is in Area C of the West Bank, which is under total Israeli Military defense force operation. control. Right. So if there's any place that ought to have high security, it would be that town, right? Right. Area C, just so our uh, uh, viewers and listeners can get a picture of this. Uh, Israeli patrols are up and down the street constantly. Yes. I mean, they're, it's, a, it's a military compound, yes. the best way to describe it. That's right. So what's been happening is that Christian sites in Israel are being attacked and the Netanyahu government does not investigate or arrest anybody. So once again, we don't know who attacked this church last week in this little town in the West Bank. <clears throat> we don't know if it was Muslims or radical Zionist Jews. We don't know yet. Okay. There was another attack, uh, May 14, um, St. Charbel Monastery in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. It also was, was uh, robbed, it looks robbed like. and uh, desecrated. So these attacks are going on regularly in churches in, in Israel and, and Palestine. Another story I wanted to bring to your attention, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, one of the, the most... Uh, revered sites in, in the Christian world is uh, in, in need of, of renovation. And has been for a couple decades, actually. Yes. So. And because of the Israeli military control, the church is being neglected. Right. Well, a generous donation was given this week for the renovation of this historic Christian Church, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. What prominent Christian gave this donation, Rick? The, uh, the, the man who gave the donation for the renovation of this Christian church is King Abdullah. Of Jordan? Of Jordan, a Muslim. Yes. Wow. Out of his personal funds, not government money, out of his personal money. Now, he's done this before, has yes, he? Yes, he has. Yes, I think the, the, the tomb of Jesus, uh, that he also funded some of the renovations yes. regarding it. So this is a big deal, isn't it? It is. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to commend King Abdullah for his generosity and his support. He, he's a Muslim king. He doesn't have to give money for the rebuilding of a Christian church. 
but that shows the respect his respect and his commitment as the custodian right. of the churches in Palestine in Jerusalem and Mr. Trump and Jared Kushner may attempt to remove him as the custodian of the churches. Right. The Hashemite kingdom has been in charge of the Christian churches and the Islamic um, mosque, in, mosque. In, in Jerusalem and in Palestine for centuries. Right. And what a lot of our viewers and listeners may not understand if uh, they're only focused on recent history, Jews and Christians and Muslims lived, worked together, traded, built buildings, work, you know, did everything together for centuries before a whole bunch of people from Europe and North America and everywhere else Ashkenaz started interfering before with everything. the Ashkenazis moved in from Europe and upset everything. It started in the 1920s, right after they overthrew Russia with the Bolshevik Revolution. Then they moved into Palestine, started setting up their communist commune farms. Uh, you know, and, and that's when you started seeing the civil unrest in Palestine in the 20s and the 30s. Terrorist yes. attacks against the British. Yes. The terrorist attacks were carried out by radical Jews, yes. not Muslims, radical Jews. Right. And, Wrap your mind around that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ariel Sharon and Menachem Begin were terrorists who should have been, quite frankly, they should have been executed. Ergen was the ISIS of yes. that day. Yes. Those men were bloody terrorists. They killed men, women, and children. They, they set off bombs. Uh, they blew up the King David Hotel. They, they blew up buses. I'm talking about the, the Jews in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, the ones that the Christian Zionists glorify as the agents of God. All right? They were bloody terrorists, and they killed a lot of not only Muslims, they killed a lot of Christians. There are villages that were wiped out, Christian villages that were wiped out by the Israeli Zionists that, that took over.